We're ready for our uh, last presentation before we'll take a quick afternoon break. Our next presenter is Molly Kuhn, and Molly is from North Scott High School in Eldridge, and she is the daughter of Kathleen and Jeff McCoon. And the title of her presentation is Introduction to Engineering Workshop. Please welcome Molly. It is a great profession. There is the fascination of watching a figment of the imagination emerge through the aid of science to a plan on paper. Then it moves to realization through energy or stone or metal. Then it brings jobs and homes to men. Then it elevates the standards of living and adds to the comforts of life. Before Herbert Hoover took office as the Secretary of Commerce, he was known as the great engineer. His work in engineering is what started him on the road to volunteering. And it was his accomplishments and successes in both public service and engineering that inspired me to follow in his footsteps. Before I talk about my project, I wanted to give a brief background on its origins. I go to North Scott High School, a small school in Eldridge, Iowa, and I have been there since kindergarten. I love North Scott, I love the district, I love the people, and I especially love the courses that are available to everyone at the high school. Specifically, the Project Lead the Way Dual Enrollment Engineering classes. I love engineering, and I've known that I wanted to do something in that field my entire high school career, and I've taken these courses since freshman year. Every year I've loved them, except for one thing. Um, last year, when I looked around my computer science and software engineering class, I noticed that I was one of three girls in a classroom of 26. And this year, in my civil engineering and architecture class, I am the only girl in a classroom of 12. It was clear to me that the classes could benefit from a few added females in the mix, and I knew that something had to change, and I wanted to be a part of that change. So, the planning process. Um, I had to find a way to impress upon people the importance of engineering and I had to find a way to make basic engineering principles fun and engaging for everyone. I already knew that I wanted to work with elementary kids. If they could grow up with a love of engineering and science, then they might be more open to taking these courses once they reached freshman year. I thought too of working with only elementary girls. After all, they are my target demographic. But I couldn't justify excluding half of an elementary school based solely on gender, so I had no exclusions in my workshop. I settled on a workshop setting because it made the most sense. I could have stations correlating to different fields of engineering and in that way encompass a wide variety of careers in one workshop. My local library was more than willing to lend me the space, so I had location, I had plan, and I had enthusiasm, so I was set. Everything fell into place. I knew that even if I wasn't chosen for this award, I was still going to see my project through to completion because that's how passionate I am about engineering outreach and how much I believe in what I'm doing. So before I knew it, the finalized engineering workshop for kids was born. In the early stages of my program, I partnered with John Deere and Iowa State's Society of Women's Engineers through contacts that I made earlier in the year. Both of these organizations gave me ideas for stations at my workshop, as well as general tips on engineering outreach programs. These were extremely helpful, especially in the beginning of my workshop in the planning process where I didn't really know where to begin. But the biggest help I received during this workshop came from a complete coincidence. Uh, my dad came home from his job at a printing company one day and said, um, I have someone I think you should meet. He is a retired aerospace engineer. He conducts programs with kids about engineering, and he's just published a book on hovercraft activities for kids called Yes, It Is Rocket Scientist, or Science. Um, it was kind of a dream come true. I immediately got his contact information, and that is how I met Bob Wint. And Bob didn't just come and help out at my workshop. He brought supplies to build water rockets with the kids outside, and he gave me ideas on future workshops, as well as ideas in my future in engineering. I would not have been as successful 
if I didn't contact Bob Wint. Okay, so the secret to my success. Before I go much farther, I wanted to just talk about um, how I managed to stay organized. Everyone knows that um, organization is key, and this yellow spiral notebook was my lifeline over the summer. Um, I didn't go anywhere without this notebook, and I wrote down everything. Um, I had my day-to-day -day planner, I had volunteer contacts, important contact information with John Deere and Iowa State, um, I had station ideas, grocery lists, random midnight thoughts, anything that was related to Herbert Hoover went in this yellow spiral. Everyone knows that when you tell yourself, oh, I don't need to write that down, I'll remember it, it's probably a lie, and writing down everything was the secret to my success. So I had so many ideas about different projects that I wanted to do at my workshop that I knew I had to test them all out beforehand and kind of pare down. And I'm very glad I did this because um, some of my ideas, no matter how hard I tried, and I tried very hard, <laughs> um, just didn't pan out. For example, I wanted the kids to build bridges out of popsicle sticks to learn about different structural techniques and how they could hold different loads. Um, as you can see, I tried several times, and each time just kind of turned into a mess. So I had to table that idea for this workshop. <laughs> I also wanted to do an activity for um, the kids about a hovercraft that I pulled from one of Bob's activities in his book. This was probably my fifth or sixth time um, attempting this, and they all kind of turned out like this. Um, I don't think my video is going to work, but the hovercraft was supposed to shoot across the table and it didn't. <laughs> Just go with that. <laughs> but I did end up some pretty wonderful stations. I had a paper airplane station, I had a pH testing station, I had a Lego station. And I was very glad that I included this Lego station because some of the kids who maybe came with their older siblings and were too young to benefit from some of these other um, concepts could go to the Lego station because everybody knows how to play with Legos. And so I was glad that I had something for everyone to do. I also had an M&M lab where kids learned about probability and percentages from their M&Ms. Outside I had a homemade ice cream station and Bob Wentz water rockets. So the day of August 10th, I got to the library two hours early thinking that was going to be plenty of time. It wasn't. Um, I was still setting up um, at 11.45 when kids started arriving, but um, there wasn't much more to do, and I was all ready by noon. Um, my, my student volunteers came, and they were amazing. I needed to be in about 10 different places at once, and thanks to them, I could be. Um, there was a moment when I walked into the library conference rooms from outside, and I couldn't even get into the room because it, there were, it was so full of laughing kids. There were so many kids and parents and paper airplanes flying around that the room was just buzzing. And that was a really powerful moment for me to see the idea that I'd had about introducing kids to engineering manifest itself into this successful workshop before me. That feeling is something that I'm going to take with me for the rest of my life. I had a video about um, kids playing with the water rocket station. Let's see if it works. Well, <laughs> um, in this video they were just testing out different ways of um, shooting off their rockets. You had to um, watch how much water you put into your rocket beforehand because it also, the ratio to water to, to compressed air inside the one liter bottle is what um, made it shoot off the fastest. And I think the kids had a lot of fun, I'm not sure if they had more fun building the rockets or chasing them and climbing the trees to get them down, but um, either way they had a lot of fun there. <laughs> so I did want to collect some feedback from the kids about my workshop, so I tried to have everyone fill out an exit form. Um, on their way out, asking them their favorite station and one thing that they learned that day. Not every kid filled out an exit form, but I had about 70 by the end of the day, which was more than enough to generate adequate feedback. I also gave each kid an interest survey, and 
this interest survey related their favorite station to a specific engineering field. I think this interest survey was probably one of the most important aspects of my workshop because it um, connected what they learned at my workshop with real world applications. I wanted a young girl to know that if she really enjoyed building paper airplanes, that she could turn that love into a career in aerospace engineering. And that is what I wanted my workshop to be about, was connecting the stations and the basic engineering principles with a career. Real, really fast, I wanted to share some exit form responses because um, going through these at the end of the night, um, I felt really proud of what I'd read. Um, going, looking at the what I learned today section, I noticed that hardly any of them were the same. And this was really powerful because it meant that I had succeeded in teaching a wide variety of engineering principles to a wide variety of kids. And going, as you can see, there, these were just some um, that I pulled out, but they were all different, and that was really powerful for me. So moving forward, um, I thought my workshop went so smoothly, um, better than I could have ever hoped. And um, for my next workshop, I plan to adjust based on the feedback that the kids gave me and based on the feedback that parents gave me at, at the day of. Um, I'm already organizing the next workshop at my elementary school, which will be really fun because then I can touch kids who went to the same school that I did. Um, and I've made new contacts with local engineers uh, to find my next guest speaker at the workshop. I have found something that I'm not only good at, but I truly enjoy doing. And I know that engineering outreach is something that I will continue to do throughout college and into my future career. I have a teacher in the audience who has always impressed upon me the importance of leaving a legacy. And I'm not sure if my workshop will continue after I go off to college, but I do know that its legacy will continue and go on to inspire the next generation of engineers, male and female alike. Because as Herbert Hoover once said, engineering truly is a great profession. Thank you. So Molly, given your uh, interest in making sure girls find some things that are interested in this, did you have a lot of girls come to the I did, workshop? yes. Um, we had about 100 kids total, and um, they the workshop was within like a three or four hour time period, and they didn't have to come right at the beginning, but from what I could tell, we had about 40 or 50 girls. So it was just about even, which is exactly what I wanted. I know you mentioned some of the partners that you worked with before the workshop, like the Iowa State <laughs> Women Engineers Group. Did you have any of those partners at the day of the workshop? I didn't have any from John Deere or Iowa State. With John Deere, I made contact with an, or with an intern there who was extremely helpful because she was also <coughs> organizing an engineering outreach program. She wasn't able to make it to the day of, but I also had Bob Wint come, and he was the one who um, organized the water rocket station, which was probably the biggest asset of my whole workshop. So I'm very glad that I reached out to him. You mentioned you're seeking a guest speaker for an upcoming workshop. Did you have one at this workshop then? That was Bob Wint. Bob, okay. he was, yeah, he's a retired aerospace engineer. So I was able to tell the kids that I had a rocket scientist coming. And that was really cool because you could just see their eyes widen when, they, when I said rocket scientist. So I'm looking for someone like Bob wins. I'm trying to weigh the greater passion of yours. Uh, one is for engineering, two is for female engineers. And after listening to your presentation, I concluded that your real passion is engineering and that involving female in engineering is a secondary, and, but hoped for uh, event. Am I correct in that? Um, I think my love for engineering also goes hand in hand with my love for women in engineering because um, I can see that the field of engineering and the careers would benefit from more females who um, have different opinions and different approaches 
but um, I just wanted to expose as many kids as possible to engineering because our school has some amazing Project Lead the Way courses that not many are taking advantage of because they might not know that they're available to them or they might not know that they have an interest in engineering. So I would say that I am trying to expose as many kids as possible to engineering and if I expose girls as well, then that is an added bonus. Okay, and what do you think female engineers would bring to the table that is not already found in a male engineer? Well, in my, um, in my computer science and software engineering class, um, I was one of three girls, and it was consistently the three girls in the class who had the most to offer. We were the ones who actually stuck to the schedule that our, um, our teacher gave us, and we were the ones who participated actively in the discussions. Um, I don't know if the males in the class took the class because it was an easy credit, because they liked the teacher, but um, from what I could tell, it was the females who were getting the most out of the class. And I think that can relate to engineering as well, because um, females have had to fight to be a part of the engineering field. So once we reach the um, point where we are involved in this field, we are going to work harder to stay in it and to make people believe that what we have to do and what we have to offer this field is valid. What are your plans for the future? Um, I'm planning to go to Iowa State to study chemical engineering. A very nice presentation. Thank you. Um, Do you have a plan for, and maybe you covered this, uh, uh, make, uh, uh, organizing this so it can continue another year? Is there a student, uh, another young woman who might take this over when you go to college and continue that interest in uh, engineering? Well, I would love it if the library could continue the program. Um, the children's librarian there is a female. Her name is Emily, and she helped me a lot during this. And they, the library has some wonderful programs that they include for children over the summer. And I would love if this could be um, a part of that. But I also don't want to give this to someone who isn't as passionate about it as I am, because then they wouldn't do it justice. So for right now, I'm planning one or two more before I go off to college. And um, if I can't find anyone else, I'm hoping that the passion for engineering that I might ignite in some of the people and the kids who come is going to be enough to hopefully get some more females and more interest in the courses at high school. What's the project lead the way? Explain that just a little bit and how that differs from just taking a chemistry class or a physics class or biology. Um, project lead the way is specifically um, engineering and um, it's like if you were going to take a coding class, um, that would be separate from Project Lead the Way because Project Lead the Way not only teaches you coding, but it also teaches you skills on interacting with the, with the client. And um, not, it doesn't just teach you the coding techniques, it also teaches you why it works and it goes more in depth. And it's a program for um, kids in high school and lower level colleges to be interested or to explore the world of engineering and not just a specific topic. Is that with SCAR Community College? Yes. Is it done in connect, connection with that? Yeah, it's a dual enrollment course with SCAR Community. Okay, thank you. I'm still talking. I just have one more point. <laughs> do, do you know that there is another finalist, a male, who is passionate about engineering? I do, yes, and I'm very glad that there are more people passionate about well, it. You two uh, are... are both a credit to that discipline. I was, uh, I graduated in engineering, and uh, to my recollection, I've been trying to think, I don't think we had a single female. And that is what I hope to change. Student. Yeah, thank you.